it all I no go ever fit tell it all, all night For all you always come true and you save the day is a mystery Always a mystery I, I. Anywhere and everywhere I see you doing mighty wonders, Lord And it's so marvelous I, I. See how you have changed my life Giving me the victory, yeah now I've got a victory in you, yeah For all you've done for me And how you set me free Oh, I got me Kelly The battles you won for me Giving me victory, yeah Oh, na 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 na, yeah I got me Yeah, 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 yeah Oh Lord, how excellent and marvelous is your name in all the earth, uh, your goodness and mercy keeps running and running after me. Uh, it's running after me. Uh, yeah. Cause anywhere and everywhere, I see you doing mighty wonders, no more. And it's so marvelous. I, I see how you have saved my life, giving me the victory. And now I've got a victory in you. It is so, it is so, it is 
done The shame is gone, grace has come It is so His eyes I have found grace in favor I'm the righteousness of the Father No weapon formed against me shall prosper I'm the weapon I have found grace and favor I'm the righteousness of the Father No weapon formed against me shall prosper There is rest for your soul There's healing for your scars Grace has spoken It is so The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and all those that dwell therein. For He has founded it upon the waters, He established it upon the seas. King of kings, you are welcome here. Lord of hosts, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. 
The ones you created are welcoming you. We join the angels in joyful procession. For we know to approach your presence. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you. In Paratia, in the bread of the bedes, in the bedosa, in the nanasa, in the bedosa, 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 in the city of the living God. We have come to the spirit of just men made perfect. We have come to the company of innumerable angels. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Let no no more de lebedosa. Asi pre eto la porose. Iye le re de lebedosa. We have come to God, the Father of all. We have come to the judge of the whole earth. We have come to the Father of all spirits. We have come to the blood of sprinkling. The blood that speaks better than me than the blood of Abel. We have come to the Holy Ghost, the governor of the end time dispensation. We have come. We have come to the Holy Ghost. Je le prie le bogo bogo rosa. Rekete le prie le bogo rosa. Je le prie le bogo rosa. Rina na zapa. Ele kida no zapa. Esu le prie le bogo rosa. Je le prie le bogo rosa. Para de le bogo rosa. Je le prie le bogo bogo de le bogo rosa. Iriki manasa. Hongo do do rusi ba. Esi ni me ketoa. Le eketi ne me gosa. Ramana tika ba. Oh, David said, I've said the Lord always before me here because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, because the Lord is always before me, therefore, my soul rejoices. My glory also rejoices. Oh, my body, my soul, my soul will also rest in hope. Can we lift up the Lord Jesus? Lord, we set you always before us. In a corporate, we have come to be old. 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 The Bible says. We all with unveiled face, yeah. beholding us in the mirror, the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, by the Spirit of the Lord. Can you lift up your voice and say, Lord, we have come, we have come, we have come to be old. Lord, we have come to be old. Je le prie de le begorose, is in the bosom of fire. Je le prie de le begor. Lord, we have come to be old. You. Le pre de le bodosa, je le pre de ni mo gosa ta. Ina de le bodosa ba ya ta. Ina no se te, ina no se te le bedesa. Rima na te. Lord, we have come to be old here. Lift up your heads, ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up. The everlasting doors that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? It's Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of the angels' armies. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty in battle. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of all things, Almighty, Elohim, the uncreated Creator. Who is this King of Glory? He celebrated him. Lift up your hands, ye gates, be lifted up, gates of cities, ancient gates of nations, be lifted up, ancient gates of nations, lift up your hands, 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 ye gates. Esunemogota, 
Lift up your hands. That the King of Glory may come in. Lift up your hands. Ancient doors. Ancient gates. Ancient gatekeepers. Lift, lift up your hands. Open the doors. The King of Glory is coming in. It's celebrated the Bodos. It's celebrated the Bodos. It's celebrated the Bodos. morning church um what a beautiful day to be in service i'd like you to just sit for a bit if you don't mind just sit for a bit so like you all know these are pre-service prayers or pre-service fellowship and what we do here between the hours of eight and nine is to just press into the purpose of God. Can we just appreciate God for the life of Pastor Neil Shunubi, um, who led us in the first opening prayers? And if, the, if I, I think because I'm not on the stage, I would probably need just a little bit of depth so I can hear myself. Can you say good morning to the person next to you? And tell them it's a good day to be in church. You can actually tell them Happy Palm Sunday. You know, thinking about Palm Sunday, I remember the church, the song we used to sing in junior church growing up. And we're going to start service with that. Pastor Gogo, good to see you. Good morning. I'm, I don't know if, if, if um, who is with the mic? I don't know if you, you were born at the time, but there was, there was a song that was being sung. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing Hosanna in the All right, let's make it an anthem. And at some point you say, Your children, your children, your children. Mananale, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Your children are saying, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Your children are saying, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Children are singing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest Your children are singing Hosanna in the highest Kindly turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew chapter 21 I think that will just be our theme song for this time of prayer. Is that okay? All right. The percussionist will lead us. Uh, Ayobami. Let's celebrate one nation, by the way. One nation. Ayobami on the percussion instrument. Daniel on the keyboard. We have our pastor in the, on the drums. Wale, Deji, and Jesse. Let, once again, let's just celebrate them and then one music. These are the levers that will be serving with us today. Matthew chapter 21 from verse 1. Alelelele kaye kamalane na kukai. Matthew 21 verse 1. Are you there? Please find it. Good morning, Pastor Tochi. Welcome to church, man. Thank you for joining us for this uh, one hour fast track early morning fellowship. And as Jesus, the disciple, Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem. Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem. They came to the town of Beth. Bethage. By the way, theologians have been trying to really agree on where this town is in current day Jerusalem. 
but because of Mount Olives, it makes it a bit easy to locate. But there's still speculation around the exact point where the town Bethage. Some said it's close to Bethany, where Bethany is the, the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, where Jesus will always go to rest at some point. But some others argue that it's just some of the suburb cities around Jerusalem. On the Mount of Olives, and Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Somebody say two. Please say two. Yes, two. He sent two of them. He said, go to the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will find a donkey tied. Um, King James said, you will find a cult. A cult that is tied. A cult is a young donkey. Very young donkey. So you will find a donkey tied there. I'm reading from, I think my chosen translation today is the, is the Living Bible, the New Living Bible translation, NLT. So if you really find it, you want to follow the very words, you can choose to, in your electronic Bible, switch to the Living Bible, right? So as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there, which is caught beside it. Untie them. Bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say the Lord needs them. Everybody say with me, the Lord needs them. The Lord needs them. You know, today's, today's service is a service where we are trusting that the Lord will mantle everyone that shall come into his presence today. And the church say, aha, it will mount on everyone. It will mount on everyone. And we want to track our prayers using the destiny of a donkey this morning. Because the theme of today's service is reigning as kings and priests. And it is in tandem with our conversation about dominion from the beginning of the year. So here we are today. We have our very great facilitator, Mrs. Ndidi Winnelly, who will be making a very, a very, very, very inspired presentation. But before we go into those presentations of the Word of God and her experience in the marketplace, we wanted to really find out just a little bit from the life of a donkey. Maybe because we're celebrating Palm Sunday today. The life of a donkey what is this thing about the interest of God upon a man mortal to the extent that he will mount on him and then his kingship and priesthood will produce a triumphal presentation of the Lord to a generation. And don't, make no mistake, it's going to be prayer laced, it's going to be laced with a lot of prayer. In fact, I have three key prayers from the life of a donkey this morning. Don't, don't be in a hurry to preempt them, but we'll pray them. In your seated position, we'll pray them until they begin to saturate us. The first one is the first thing you said to your neighbor earlier. In verse 3, he said, Just if they ask you, why are you untying this donkey? He said, just say, the Lord needs them. What do you say? The Lord needs them. How, did, how is it put in the uh, New King James Version? Let's find out how he puts it there. I think I like the, the, the bold presentation of uh, New King James. He said, when they say to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And guess what? And the Bible says, immediately. No, they will not go have a meeting. They will not go confer with each other. Immediately, he will send them. Immediately, you will take them. My own translation said, and immediately, he will let you take them. Verse 4. The Bible says, this took place to fulfill the prophecy that was said. Tell the people in Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. 
that he's humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's cart. The Bible says in verse 6 that the two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the cart to him and threw their garment. What did they throw? They threw their garments over the court and he sat on it. What did the crowd do? Verse 8. And most of the crowd spread their garment on the road ahead of him. But excuse me. Excuse me. Why, will, why were the people spreading their garments for a donkey? Was it not because he was carrying somebody, right? It was because he was bearing on his back the Messiah. A Messiah that have come to fulfill prophecy. And Jerusalem was symbolic of the marketplace. Jerusalem was symbolic of the, the world. Jerusalem was symbolic of the civilized world. And there was very intelligent men and women bringing their clothes. Something that should be of prized possession to them at the time putting them on the ground some put on the donkey some put on the ground some put ahead so they, that means they track the path of Jesus and they put their clothes verse 8 and said most of the crowd spread their garments on the road and others cut branches from the tree spread them on the road Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people around him were shouting. Praise God. Now this time I want to go back to King James. Let me go back to King James. Help me with King James, sir. New King James. Verse 9. Jesus was in the center of it. Yeah. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Verse 10, the entire city of Jerusalem. I go back to my own translation. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? They asked. And the crowd replied, It is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Uh, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna Hosanna in the highest The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest You know, I wanted to ask Jesus Excuse me, sir You were trained in Jerusalem You should have known That a cult, a donkey Has to be of a certain age Before you can sit on it Right? I wanted to say, excuse me, Jesus, why did you choose a young donkey? Why did you choose a donkey that was tied? And, and, and this morning, the Lord said, he is in need of men that he can ride into the city. He is in need of kings and priests that he can ride into families. On this day that we are marking the Palm Sunday is beyond picking palm fronds. You know, I grew up as a Catholic boy and this for me was the most favorite part of my Christian year. Lent. When it came to Lent, all of us became, in fact, that's when my name, St. Jude, became really very, 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 he lives his, he lives, ah, mommy is happy, you know, for a mother who has four sons that are not always behaving right. You know what I mean, yeah? Lent was a good season. Lent was a very good season. Right. So, I was saying that Palm Sunday is beyond those palm fronts that we fold into a cross. 
and take to service. What we are examining this morning is, why did Jesus choose to ride a donkey? Why did Jesus not choose a horse? The, the, the vehicle of conveying kings in his time was not donkeys. They were horses. Because a horse typified power, presence, and strength. When you see a king, and they don't give the king ordinary horses, they go to the, for the best of, they go for the stallions, the strong, the, in fact, the horses meant for the royal family were bred specially because the, the, it is intended that when the king, because the king in those days, as a show of power, has to mount the strongest horse and has to be in front of the army, even if he can't fight, right? It was a show. And then when he now says go, they will go. He will now retreat. For those, apart from King David, King David always led the charge until they said, David, don't go. Let them not go and kill you. You have become old. You will be the lamp in Israel. Go and stay in the palace. Unfortunately, that did not help him so well. But it's okay. That story for another day. Right. So, Jesus chose something away from the analogy. He chose a donkey. He didn't just choose a donkey. He chose an untrained donkey. The Lord began to tell me this morning, I don't have time for a long sermon. I just want to present three points for us to pray with before service starts today. Posturing our hearts for reigning as kings and the the Lord said that he will go for he will only go many times for the unlikely vessels are you with me he said he will go for what the unlikely vessels because the power for him as king is not in the horse the power for him is not in the vessel the power is in the one who has chosen to mantle the vessel the power is in the one who has chosen to mantle the vessel. That's why we came to service today. We're saying, Lord, excuse me, sir, perhaps you will have mercy on me and you will choose to mantle me even into the city that you have called me for. You see, all of us are not called into the same city. We're not called into the same industry. We're not called into the same terrain. But there is one consistent thing that all of us must pray for this morning. The Lord, the Lord, I don't want to be, I don't want to ride alone because if I ride into the city alone, I will be like every donkey in Jerusalem. Perhaps it will please you to mount on me even though I am unqualified. So we're going to pray that prayer. Prayer number one, let the figure. See, they said this court was untrained. This court was untrained. This court was young. This court, in fact, the mother had to be around it, according to the Gospel of Matthew. Luke and uh, and Mark and Luke did not tell us that the, the, the mother was by it. But Matthew was very emphatic because Matthew wanted to refer to the prophecy in Isaiah. He then said that, he said, the, 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 the king will come riding on, on a donkey. And, and the Bible says that even though that court was young, Jesus wanted it. Malevane. You are going to say, Lord, I know that even in my office right now, I still have imposter syndrome. I know many times I look at my children. I don't know whether I'm qualified to parent them, to parent them. But this morning, we have come to learn how to reign as kings and as priests. Lord, I pray therefore, that though I feel unqualified, let the guests get out. May it please you to send for me today. Mate Koska, please close your eyes. Please don't stare at me. And if you can pray in the spirit, pray alongside with me. Zambelegin, Mandelukava, Impeleto Skefatadia, Red Degeligaga, Paro Takaskova. Even though I, 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 I seem unqualified, even though I look I look frail and young, let the ghost cavane, la de degedelege bababa, la te casque vanigaya, le bebebebe katakata, shate kate ghost cavagadena, impala kakaliba gogobolo gogoboya, et te casque gagalia. I've always found myself in my life in places where I feel I'm undeserving of. I remember one day I slept 
and I woke up and they said you are the resident pastor of this present house and I was asking God I said God excuse me you must have made a mistake maybe you will appear in a dream to Apostle Tony Rappo this night and tell him that that boy is not what you think he is Melegena and the Lord said to me I do not call the qualified I qualify those that I call I don't know whether you're feeling an imposter syndrome in your office in that role as a husband please don't let any movement distract you I want you to pray this one I said father I may seem unqualified I may even look like I am I am frail but Lord I beg of you Malakatena sent for me Makatea Suke Paledo you sent two disciples ahead into Bethage to come look for the court that is tied Lord send for me Lord send for me Alakaduke I say so guys, the angels are singing Malagadere Kebanura, La Pelota and the Kuskiba. Jesus sent for me. Oh, God sent for me. Adeloka Meleate, send for me, Father. Send for me, Lord. La Ketola Gede, Ratata, Apepepelekeda, Empepelekedekedekede, Sakatarege Gabane, Ipalato Kesko Begedelea, Rababakoya. Son zegede legede baleto koskeba rape pepe ketona entete legege koskafana imbala kopena na kila gadeya lakate kama no kaskove rape pepe 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 legege lege kabakota he said he said he sent them ahead he said go to perfect you will find the court oh lord send for me Lord, this is a send for me. Atato sanda goya, ipalatonza, ede legge liga baroke. Atata zakate zofa, balagoba, embalakatoka, abalate kaskobe, imbalakatoka dia. Rada, 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 rada da, shakabane, embalakagadele. Pray that prayer for one more minute. Sixty seconds. Adepora bere kadule. Imbala gadena. Aska parika. Repe pepe kadele gaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this is what happened. When they found the court, a little. What's the praying? When they found the court. They found it was tied. In fact, Jesus used that as a description of how they will find the, the court. He said, you will find a court that is tied. Many times, your situation does not look like the calling. Uh, Pastor David, the, 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 your circumstances does not look like the summoning that the Lord has placed upon your life. Your circumstances may look like you are restricted. You, are, you don't have enough resources. When a donkey is tied, the movement is within a certain circumference. But you know, when Jesus said to them, what Jesus said to them is what excited me this morning. He said, when you get there, loosen it, loosen it. And if, they, if anyone will question, why are you appointing that girl as CFO? She is not qualified. Tell them, give them a response. The master needs her. Why is that child being given that privilege? Tell them the master needs it. I don't know whether you feel why why is it that it's me in my family? The Lord chose to bless with wealth. All my siblings are still yet to get there. But it looks like every door I knock can open. And sometimes you are afraid. Maybe some people have taken your name somewhere. Those are supervising spirits. They want to make sure you are still tied. They want to make sure you are still restricted. But indeed, Osana moment has come. You cannot be tied anymore. In that case, Kofanana, Jesus said to them concerning Lazarus, lose him and let him go. This Sunday at the Palm, at the remembrance of the triumphal entry, we are saying concerning ourselves, Lord, because you have summoned me, every rope that have restricted my movement, 
every rope that have limited my resourcing everything that have not made me answer the call right now I say my Leko Barretta knows if I can get 10 people who are tired of being in the same spot and are willing for a movement a shift this season in their life oh somebody saying to me pastor but I have prayed today is a different day this day presents another opportunity I will love it if you can lift up your voice and pray and say Lord every rope that has limited is a the master Eloa Rada Dosa and Lose her and let her go. Lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. Lose him and let him go. Menta kate goske vania. Impala de gegeli bahuna. Menta kaske vagadania. Repa lota kasko vane. Beko para ko papa. Leko pande kutaliga. Ita taka kaka kasko vaneya. Liga banda ya. Zota ta yada bara daga yada gas. La de lo se branda ya. Zota. Rapa pa pa pa. Lebo rato de La de la baba mousse, la de I am not the one that said it's time. Jesus is the one declaring it's time. I am not the one that said it's time. Jesus is the one that said it's time. I am not the one that said it's time. Jesus is said it's time. I am not the one that said it's time. Jesus said it's time. It's time to move. I have been tied in this position for too long. I have been misjudged for too long. I have been misinterpreted for too long. The master has need of me this season. The master has need of me this season. I walk into my Hosanna moment because the master has need of me this season. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The choir is going to join me now. But I really need us to pray. Pastor Nee, join me. Join me, Nakad, Legagani, Bakukole, Kaskiva, the Parai, Le Baba Baba, Coca Cabade. Pastor, join me here. La Dose, join me, sir. La Comala. Can we stand on our feet? Let's just pray this prayer. Now, I want you to pray this prayer in a warfare dimension. Because sometimes, listen, listen, listen. See, don't, don't take any moment for granted. They are saying, but service has not started. What are they doing? I, see, don't miss your Kairos moment. Some of us will have the encounter we need for today's service now. Now, now, in the name of Jesus. Sometimes they have sent for you, but there are people who think they still have ownership over you that we query why they are untying you. Oh Lord, Kosa. Somebody, Pastor Nee, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. I said. There are moments, there are moments. I once had an appointment as a CEO of a company and, and later on, the board, they were telling me the dynamics that went on when conversations were being had about my taking over that company, right? And in the, con in the conversation, not too many people, not too many people, are saying let him go lose him and let him go jesus said when you try to untie that donkey somebody will query what are you doing what are you doing when you try to when you try to propose to that lady as your wife somebody will ask why did she think she can get married right now, the querying is in the spirit realm. That's why you need to be spiritual a bit this morning. I asked Pastor Nee to join me because I want us to pray a prayer of agreement. He said, but when they ask you, you are going to say to them, 
the master give me that scripture so they see that i'm not yes i think that is what verse is that he said when they ask you they're going to say to them the master needs it they will ask what are you doing that's verse three he said they will ask what are you doing they will ask what are you doing can you see there he said they will ask what are you doing some of you here, your names have been nominated. There's a nomination on your name. But there's somebody querying. What, 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 what? Ah, this family is not supposed to get this kind of attention. This marriage is not supposed to enjoy this kind of longevity. Because the, 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 his father's marriage ended at 15 years. His uncle's marriage ended in, at 18 years. This one is about to celebrate the 20th anniversary. Why is he different? There is a principality. There is a prince right now querying why the master has summoned the donkey for use. But you are going to hold a hand by you. Melody, last night we gathered as pastors and we began to pray. And for about two hours, we labored on your behalf that every demonic oppression, everything within your space that is querying the, your Hosanna moment. You are going to say to them, I am not, I didn't come by myself. I didn't ask for myself. I was not summoned by myself. There is a power that indeed that sponsors me. That's why elephant they can hear for Roka. Look at that. 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 Let us bind the strong man. Let us bind. Everybody pray now. Let us bind the strong man. 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 Every voice. Every voice. Paleto Every voice. Query. Is it not Jude? Since when did Jude become a man of God? Is it not Jude? So now he can pray for the sick. Is it not Jude? So now he thinks he can preach the word of God. Every negative voice around your ascension. Query. Why? Send the Kategelia, La Prake to Kagagaba, Semanaka Sofaria, Empalate Sova. Wait a good warfare. Today is Sunday, the 24th of the month. Wait a good warfare. Ata to Sanda Lekani, Rato Tasso Takate, Ayabe. Epalato sanda yaka, apa pepe la gatiate, impalato se parado, eya tane koskeba, baladora, manana, esa pray, esa pray, apa pepe lo kababaka, se paragaga, la gagagalera, brada kota kata. Lose her. We rebuke the strong man. We rebuke every supervising spirit. We come against the works of darkness. When they ask, every principality asking, what are you doing? We are saying the Lord needs the Lord needs my life. The Lord needs my marriage. The Lord needs my hope. The Lord needs my children. The Lord needs
needs my children. The Lord needs my children. The Lord needs my hope. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to hear your amen like you are praying. All right, let's do that again. In Jesus' name. Amen. The one we are going to pray for now, we are still in that warfare mode. We are not saying, permit us to take this donkey next year. Bring that scripture up again. Don't be in a hurry to be removing scripture for me, please, until I ask you to take it off. Because we are not just praying in tongues. We are praying the word of God. Aha. Uh -huh. The Bible said, Jesus said to them, once you tell them that I didn't just want to get married though. The Lord needs my marriage to display his glory. <laughs> I'm not just ambitious to run a Fortune 500 company. The Lord needs my company to break into Zion. I'm not just ambitious to be on Forbes first 200 CEOs because I need somebody with the name of the Lord in that list. There's education to fund. There are hospitals to be built. There are churches. There are mission fields. Listen, what we are going to handle now is the expediency, the immediateness of this order. And they say, he will immediately, immediately, he will let you take them. I think King James said, at once, he will release. Some of us, you, are, you have just been living. You don't know that the Lord has sent for you a long time. But so many people have been querying what makes you qualified for this role. There are some of you, your names have been submitted for promotion in your offices a long time ago. Each time it, your name is coming up on the board agenda. They say it's time to make Akin CFO. There's, somebody, there's a voice saying, why? What are you doing? Look at that scripture. There's a voice saying, what are you doing? Why do you want to make a maker? The, the VP of this company what qualification and then you go and get a qualification and they say no the qualification is not enough is he from this geopolitical zone the day you get you get somewhere and you you meet the criteria they shift the goalposts but right now we're going to say immediately somebody immediately. say immediately. immediately i don't know what has delayed the release of for your hosanna moment but today jesus made a triumphant entry into jerusalem and you are holding one hand and you are agreeing. Please indulge me for five more minutes. You are going to say right now, whatever it be that is querying the release for me as a donkey to go and carry my, my, my Messiah into Jerusalem, the Alakabena, immediately, immediately, now, 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 Pray that prayer for your daughter. Pray that prayer for your son. Call the name of your children. Say the Lord needs you. Call the name of your children. The names of your children. Call the names of your children. Children, summer, the Lord needs you. Immediately, now. Every strange spirit. Every ancestral connection that is trying to limit your existence to be too good. Immediately, I'm saying to you, La Precatone, Samba La Catona, Sebra Catana Gazeva, Pale, Pale, Umbe Bebebebebe, Ascama Nagafe Carota, Asha Catana Gagaliga, Brata Tokoske Vagadi. Brother, talk as Kevagadea. Not tomorrow, not next week. Immediately. 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 Let me take my son. I take back my marriage. I take back my son. That's my brother that is beginning to give to be given to addiction. I seize back his life. 
Immediately they will let you take them. 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 Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Immediately. 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 I want you to pray that prayer like you mean it. Don't stop that prayer. Don't stop that prayer. I think I see her five minutes. Combalabatina coboroto lobodoha, a canato brite to paratecaia, a shellete cabocoto cotecadesa, Rimanato paratamanata, Hinano, Yelebeke de Gregere, Asiparata, Zeleberete, Zeleberete, Jalabacata Labaco, in Jesus' name, Amen. Just two quick prayers and we'll say the opening prayer and the service starts. Listen, what these are the, some of the prayers that we prayed when we were growing up in God that began to shape how life turned out for us. I, don't joke with the prayers you're praying right now. I remember the first day I heard this charge. It was far away in Boko and it was our brother uh, Billy, Billy Akani. Good morning, Mrs. R. Welcome to church, man. It was our brother uh, Billy Akani that was sharing this scripture. He, he, he brought fresh insight to me about 20 years ago. And it was very simple. The prayer we're going to pray now is, the Bible said when they brought the donkey to Jesus in that triumphant entry, the disciples put some clothes on the donkey and Jesus mounted the donkey. We're going to say, Lord, I give you permission, mount my life. Mount my life. I bring my children before you, please mount them. Please mount them. See, so you're going to pray that prayer with a sense of commitment. It's a consecration prayer. The celebration that the church is marking today is the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. But there will be no triumphant entry without a yielded donkey. We're saying, Lord, mount my life. Mount my life. I bring my business before you. Mount it. Mount it. Climb on it. Donkeys are known to be stubborn. Donkeys that are untrained cannot be cannot be mounted on the first day. We hear in that scripture that that donkey was no man had ridden that donkey before. That means the donkey was yet untrained, but the donkey yielded. To Jesus, you are saying, Lord, I yield my home, I yield my business, I yield my family, I yield my life that you might mount me. He said, uh, Who will bring me to the strong city? 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 city? By our prayer this morning, we are saying, Here. I am Lord. Send me, Lord. Here am I. Send me. Send me. You can mount my life. You can mount my home. You can come in. You can climb on a lefosa. Fande letoske vade. Plato valetosia. Lord, I yield to you. There's no other essence for which I try to acquire wealth. It is for you. There's no other person I am training this children for they are for you there's no other reason i am very 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 careful about how my family administers her business it is because of you lord therefore i'm praying this morning on this day that the church celebrates the palm sunday lord that as the donkey 
for a personage mount my life I yield to you I yield to you I yield my life my choices my choices my choices this present house we are declaring as a people that Lord as a people a governing church we do not govern for ourselves that you are the reason you are the reason Lord in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and I'm done and I think you can take this length in a way amen this one is very very dear to my heart it was the last thing the Lord pointed out to me regarding this story remember we have prayed number one we prayed God sent for me for those of us who missed it this is our prayer posture throughout this service reigning as kings and priests if nobody sent you if you sent yourself you have to sponsor yourself a lot of people are afraid to keep their station in their offices or even in their marriage because you don't know who sent you. If the Lord actually sent for you, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 21 that Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead and said, go to the city of Bethphage. You will find a cult tied. Bring it, lose it and bring it to me. So our first prayer was, Lord, send for me. So that you are not going into that industry by yourself. Yeah. Second prayer was, Jesus said to them, when you try to attempt to loosen it, there will be a supervising spirit that will say, why are you, who told you that this man is qualified for this role? You know, and we began to say that so many of us have been recommended for roles. But in the spirit, there's been queries saying, who, what are you doing? And then that was number two prayer. We began to pray that lose him and let him go. The third prayer was immediately. We prayed immediately. We prayed immediately. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, and he will immediately let you have them. Right? So we're not saying that people will gain their deliverance next year. We're saying no. immediately upon no. the summoning of the master, everyone that have been tied and their movement have been limited either by sin, either by ignorance, the Lord is saying lose him and let him go. That was the third prayer. The fourth prayer was, Lord, mount my life. I give you the, I give the override in, in programming. If you are not giving, if you have not given override, no, nobody can ask us a particular program, right? And Jesus, God said, my spirit will not strive with man. So you have to give the override. You're saying, Lord, my home is available. If you need, if you ever need anything, use my life. I am available. I'm available. That was the prayer. But the last prayer we're going to pray is, Lord, when Hosanna begins to come, help me to realize that Hosanna is not for me. Help me to realize that Hosanna is just because of the one I'm carrying. Many of many people, many donkeys have been summoned when they got to the streets of Jerusalem and they began to see the clothes on the road and they began to see the palm branches on the road. They began to assume that I am too smart. That's why men are going ahead to give me a calling. They've forgotten that it's because Jesus has mantled me. What business have some of us, small street boys, speaking to fine people like you, if not for the Lord who mantled us? You're going to say, Father. Keep my heart humble. Keep my spirit accessible. That when Hosanna begins to come, that I will recognize that Hosanna is not for me. Hosanna is for the one, the Messiah that I carry. If I can get five people to pray that prayer, if I can get five people to pray that prayer, Keep my spirit accessible. Keep me nimble in your hand. That one day I will not begin to appropriate Hosanna to myself. Hosanna is for you. Hosanna is for you. Hosanna is for you. The glory is for you. The accolade is for you. Only your name will be glorified in my life. In my family. Only you will be glorified. Only you will be glorified. I vow to return the glory. I vow to return the honor. I vow to return the praise. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise. 
I believe you're not ready for it. Let's do it now. I said, give him a shout of praise. One more time. One more time. One more time. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Don't, don't break it. Don't break it. We're about to go into... So, good morning, and welcome the person next to you. Just tell the person, in case the person says, what's happening? Just tell the person, no, you just came into a revival encounter. You just came into a revival service. You just came into a divine encounter service. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. All right. So, so officially, I'm opening the service. It's 9 a.m. officially. I'm opening today's service, yeah? And you can tell your neighbor, happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The church calendar, today is Palm Sunday. That's why we decided to pray with the story of the donkey. Sorry, I wasn't comparing your life to a donkey. We just found a good metaphor to pray this morning, yeah? All right, all right. So, in the next few weeks, we announced it last week, and I know some of us are just coming from our various trips. The next few weeks, our services typically start at 9 and end at 11. And we have one combined mega triumphant service each Sunday, right? <laughs> uh, but we decided that we will spend eight to nine for a quick fellowship. How many of you love the fellowship you had with God? Give, put your hands together for the Lord, yes. It was supposed to be a leader's prayer, but some of us have chosen to join us and we can as well. Today, leading us in the time of prophetic praise, you want me to announce you? Come now, come, come. Yeah. Woo! One music. So for the next 25 to 30 minutes, I want you to forget that you have a neighbor, right? And I want you to bask in the presence of God, right? Because the word of God will come to you, but the way of preparing for it, let's give the Lord one last shout as we welcome his presence. Give him a shout of victory! Somebody give a shout to the Lord! The king is here. The king is here. He says, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the king of Israel. They took branches of palm. What are you bringing to the Father this morning? What are you bringing to the King of Glory? What are you bringing to the Father? The King of Israel is here. What are you bringing in His presence to hail Him and shout, Hosanna! in authority, sits in power, sits in majesty, sits in dominion. Lama sata pamakadakada. We have come to cry Hosanna this morning. We've come to worship the King of Israel. He's worthy of our praise. And I'm saying, in humble adoration, we bow before your throne as we come before your presence <laughs> we honor you alone so we lift up our voices as trumpets around in you you are the king of Israel <laughs> so this is what we do As we come before your presence, to honor you, to honor you alone. So 
Oh, so 
gave your life on the cross so that I might live. You gave up your son just for me so that I will live. Oh,
the power of Jesus' name. Let it Understanding of the lordship of Jesus and it's submitted it's possible after he had been released for him to begin to struggle with the master he didn't struggle with the master he didn't even have an idea where the master would be riding through but in the scriptures the donkey followed everywhere the master led so we are going to pray this morning and say, Lord Jesus, I submit to your Lordship. In this season, I live conscious of your Lordship, of your sovereignty. The Bible tells us when Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he said, let us pray this way. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask you this morning, Father, that in our lives, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the name of Jesus. In this season, we are conscious of your lordship. We are conscious of your sovereignty. As a result of this, we move according to the leading of your spirit. We are aware that living our lives according to our desire does not bring about the purpose of your sovereignty or your death. Oh, as a house this morning, we bring our consciousness, oh, to submit to your will, to submit to your guidance. Oh, the Bible tells us that as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. We are aware of the release that the Lord has given to us in this season. We are aware that we've been released immediately to serve the master oh we come this morning we obey you we obey you we live conscious of your commands we live conscious of your instructions we live conscious of your sovereignty we are aware that what the father wants is that his will will be done on earth as it is being done in heaven father you can count us worthy you can trust us that this week this day we will obey you your kingdom will come everywhere you send us we are conscious of your kingdom in the boardroom in the board meetings as we raise our children in our homes, in our careers, in our businesses, in our ministries. We are conscious that we are carriers of your presence. We are conscious that your kingdom, your will will be done through us here on earth. We submit to you, Holy Ghost. 
We submit to you, Holy Ghost. We submit to you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Put your hands together for him who reigns. Put your hands together for him who rules in the affairs of men. Hallelujah. You can be comfortably seated. I warmly welcome you into the presence of the master this morning. And I want to assure you that the Lord is doing a new thing. The Lord is so interested in you and in myself. And this week, you will be hearing his voice. You will just know what the master wants you to do. However, there is one thing that the Lord cannot do for you. He cannot obey himself by himself. You have to obey. So as the Spirit of God will nudge your heart this week, please obey and the kingdom of our Father will be expanded through you and you and you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I would like to welcome all our online viewers from wherever you are joining us from. We welcome you into this mega triumphant entry service. And we know that the Lord who has summoned you will meet you right where you are. In the name of Jesus. Can we please have the video announcement? God bless you and good morning. I saw Jesus crucified. I spoke to him as he died. I saw him in his struggle. I watched as he breathed his last breath and when he stopped breathing, I lost my breath too. The one who walked on water is no more. The one who fed 5,000 is now food for the worms and if he has been defeated, what does that mean for me? As I watched his body taken down from the cross, I saw my friend was gone. He was the one who found me. How could this be? He can't be in a tomb. I can't come to grips with the thought that the man who claimed to be I am was slain by the hands of men. And then, she burst through the door. Our friend Mary, she said, someone had taken the body of the Lord. So we ran to the tomb, only to find an empty room. And the stone was rolled away. I looked on the floor and I saw his clothes and that's when I knew he rose Jesus is alive he did walk on water he did feed the 5,000 he did raise Lazarus from the dead and heal thousands he did make the wine Jesus took death nails in his hands Nails in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head for you. He laid his life down and he took it back again. Jesus is alive.
This season, as we celebrate Easter, the Welfare Department is back with another incredible initiative. Starting today, you can buy selected dry food items and provisions at a massive discount, 50% off their market price. To take advantage of this, just stop by the welfare stand outside. Please note that this is limited to one purchase per person. Thank you. We can do better, we can do better. Please do me well to welcome your neighbor. Tell them welcome to the triumphant service. I hope you're excited in God's presence. And Bible says in His presence there's fullness of joy. And at His right hand there are what? Pleasures forevermore. Amen. Just to reiterate some of the announcement next week Sunday service is going to be our Easter celebration service. Are you excited about that? And we're going to be having the apostle over this commission, Apostle Tony Rappo. We're going to be having our friend and brother, Minister Nosa, always. He's going to be bringing worship. And then we have the best choir in the whole wide world, the Lagos Community Gospel Choir, LCGC. Amen. Um, on Saturday before the Sunday, we have um, our food, medical and clothing um, and food drive. Um, and that is a program that we are having in collaboration with the Banky Wellington organization. Can you please put your hands together for that? And it's going to be right here at the dome, um, at the car park at the dome by 10 a.m. on Saturday. Please, um, if you know someone that is in need, just inform them. Come on Saturday, 10 a.m. This is part of all the initiatives you have been putting together. Be your uh, brother's keeper, you know, and... Um, and just make it a date with us on Saturday. Um, on s today and next week, Sunday, we are having the Welfare Department um, food drive. And really what that is all about is having great discount, 50% discount on all food items. But you can't buy too many of them because it's not for resale. It's meant for you. Tell your neighbor this is, this is the effort of the church to cater for the need of those around us. Can, can you please help me tell your neighbor that this is the effort of the church to cater for the needs of those around us. Amen. Amen. Today is our family and friends Sunday service. Family and friends Sunday service. And during services like this, we bring babies to dedicate to the Lord. We celebrate the doings of God in our life. You know, we celebrate milestones, birthdays, marriages. And today... God has not left himself without a witness. We have a baby to dedicate. Are you excited about that? And we have a baby girl to dedicate. The girls are winning. All right. So I would like to call on the family of Mr. and Mrs. Ayemere. Mr. and Mrs. Ayemere. One music, can we have some song as the dance forward? In the morning when I wake up And the pastors join me on the
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, they are still deliberating on who is going to introduce the baby. All right. So who is going to introduce the baby? All right. Can you please introduce your baby? Okay. Her name is Somachi Efwa Zoe Ayemere. Can you? Let's, let's clap to that. Let's clap to that. She still has one more assignment. You're going to tell us the meaning of those names. Hallelujah. Okay. So much it means the, the goodness and the beauty of God. F1 means light. Zoe means life. Hallelujah. Are those beautiful names? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we also recognize the grandparents. You're welcome. Can we give them a round of applause? They are aging gracefully, gracefully. We would like to call on our mother, Mrs. Howard, to come dedicate the baby. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am. And um, happy Palm Sunday. Good. It's always a joy to welcome a new baby and to have an opportunity to dedicate a child to God. Dedication is so important because it brings meaning into the life of the child. God said to Jeremiah, before you were born in your mother's womb, before you were conceived, I separated you. I anointed you, I consecrated you, and I sanctified you to walk in a specific purpose on earth. And so when we bring the children to God, we are actually planting them in the pathway of their divine purpose. And so it's my joy, my privilege, and my honor to be able to do so for this little precious baby. And let me welcome the grandparents and... Um, I became a grandparent in November, so, so it's a joy to be able to do this. Thank you. You're all welcome. Mom, you're welcome and you look beautiful. And I want to give you a charge, both of you. The best thing you can do for this baby is to stay together. And staying together doesn't mean there wouldn't be challenges. It doesn't mean that there wouldn't be occasion to think of leaving. But you see, the, the greatest gift you can give a child is the confidence that comes from being nurtured by two parents. And it's also about generations. The enemy fights for the future. But God has positioned you as custodians of this precious baby. And it will require sacrifice. Once a pastor said to me, you know, Koyo, to have marriage work, one person has to die on the cross occasionally. One person's got to be crucified and hanging there and saying no. I didn't quite like that, but in the course of time, you'll find out that that's what is required to keep marriage together. God bless you. Eternal God. What did you say? I mean, so much. So much. What did you say it meant, Kate? Uh, it meant the goodness and beauty of God. The goodness and beauty of God. You look so beautiful. Father, I bring this precious girl to you. Melikisio, rapato kosia, renene kipusia, alikaposa kapataria, rene soprokoto, zipreketo prakate pre. Zimre ke tu kushka pataya ne, lega dodo sin kate ke bosi anta, lega dede kusi ante ke bosi anta haya. Father, I bring the fullness of your anointing and your grace upon this child. Walk like Deborah, lead like Deborah, liki mosio komatalia, lekumatia lead troops for Christ. You'll be a wife, you'll be a mother, you'll be a prophetess, and you will rise to the courts of kings to declare the glory of God. 
Be like Abraham. Be the friend of God. Walk before God and be thou perfect. And he will be your El Shaddai. Be like Esther. Carry the grace and the beauty of an anointed one. Carry the grace and beauty and the peace of an anointed queen in the courts of kings. May your delicate nature cause you to win battles for your nation. Indeed, this nation. Go and be great. I commend you to the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ that passes all understanding. Be a peaceful child. I commend you to the presence of the Almighty God. Love his presence from now. May your spirit know Jesus. Leandro Sepeto, be filled with power. Be filled with glory. Walk in the resurrection power. And let it define your purpose in the name of Jesus. Walk in divine protection. And for your sake, your parents will remain together. Amen. I declare and decree there will be no separation and no divorce. For the Lord has planted you as a, a, as a tree in a garden of beauty. That you may fulfill divine purpose and divine destiny. Walk in his protection. God is your shield. God is your secret place. God is your refuge and strength. God is your very present love in time of need. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much, ma'am. One nation, one music, can we have some songs as we dance thank on the stage? You, Lord. Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say very instructive for me as Mrs. I was praying over the child was she said rise as Deborah and if you understand who Deborah was she operated as a king and priest God has found himself someone that will operate as a king and as a priest that is the destiny of the child in Jesus name amen amen now we're gonna be going over to worship the Lord with our substance it's always a privilege when we come before God, knowing that He's the God that has no need, but yet is giving us the privilege to bring to Him in love, in submission, with a joyful heart, with gladness of heart, rejoicing and thanking Him. Because out of the abundance of what the Lord has given to us, we are bringing to Him. I said it before and I'm going to say it again, that when we bring to God and give to God, it is a posture that receives more from him because you can't receive anything if your hands are tightly folded if you have to receive then you have to open up your hands this morning i want us to give out of our love out of our resources and bring to god we want to celebrate everyone that has been given to the building of the house or some group of people gathered together and said on this sound issue we will stand and we have raised some considerable amount of money um, for the sound project. Can we put our hands together for the Lord for that? And this week we are stepping into, we are commissioning the sound. Um, some of those things will be, you know, paid for, but we still have some way to go. We have 50% there. We still have about 50% more to go, you know, roughly 50 something percent more to go. Uh, please join 
and give to the Lord. You would like to give your tithe. It is good to bring your tithe. Someone said, why should I give God my tithe? If you are indeed a worshiper and you come before his presence, he will demand for everything. Better give the 10% before you demand for everything. All right, give the 10% now. Now you want to give the Lord. You want, you, you, you're saying in your heart, I've not given anything to the Freedom Center. You're saying in your heart, I've not given to the Lord. I see the beautiful things that the Lord is doing in the house. I'm not yet part of it. This is your time to be a part of what the Lord is doing. One thing I vowed that Lord, when your saints are doing great things on their heart for you, I will not be left behind. I will be at the forefront of the move of God in my time and generation. And I believe the same with you. We're going to have one, one music. They have a special rendition. And they'll be bringing that rendition as we give to the Lord. For those of us that need the account details on the screen, I believe it's been projected. You need an envelope. Please reach out to the Synergy team to get one. You need a POS machine because the envelope is too small for what you brought. Just raise your hand. We'll bring one, one over to you. God bless you as you give. One music. Hallelujah. We give you praise, oh God. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the land. All who've gone before us, all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the land. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest. Dominion, all power and position, your name stands above the all, and the angels cry. All creation
above every limitation. Till all falls, all falls. All power and position lifts your voice. Lift your voice. to be my honor to pray over your offerings and your gifts that you brought before the Lord this morning your tithes your vows that you have redeemed eternal father we thank you for the privilege to give back to you we know from our hearts that you said indeed that you love one that gives cheerfully as a sign of gratitude, but more than that, as a symbol of surrender. Lord, we ask that every resource in that we have brought before you, that you find them pleasing and acceptable, like the offering of Abel, that we might not be found in the order of Cain. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we, we ask more importantly that the sacrifices of a broken heart and a contrite spirit, that you will find acceptable before you this morning. For those who brought a tithe, you said in your word, you will rebuke the devourer. Let your promise stand sure, even as we proceed on to the rest of today's service and ascend into the place of your word. Speak expressly to us. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. And the church say, it's such a beautiful service this morning. Do you want to just say good morning to your neighbor one more time? Just one more time. Yeah. You know, it's almost Easter, right? So can you give them that resurrection smile? All right. Amen. <laughs> Some people don't know what they... Some people say, what does resurrection smile mean? <laughs> it just means smile. <laughs> just smile. <laughs> you know, it takes, it takes so many muscles to frown your face, but it just relieves all of them when you smile. Amen. Okay, so today's service is quite unusual. We are actually building up steeply in the climax of our subject, Walking in Dominion, that we started at the beginning of the year. And it has encompassed both marketplace relevance and our lives as priests in God's kingdom. We've always established that this, this, this commission, this ministry, this house, this tribe, is set on a special assignment as given to God's servant, uh, Apostle Tony Rappo. Um, to raise leaders, to raise marketplace gatekeepers, to raise governmental rulers and leaders in that will determine and shape the destiny specifically of this nation and Africa. We have also seen out of this house a lot of 
people have actually been shot into global relevance. Today, by the grace of God, we are building further in that conversation. And we have a very dear facilitator who will be making a presentation of God's word to us this morning for a few minutes, and then I'll be joining her for a very short chat. Um, I have a video announcement that does justice to her introduction. But I, I consider her a dear daughter of this house, a woman of God by excellence, a mother, a wife, and she's also an apostle in the marketplace. She is the founder of Leap Africa. And yes, you can clap. <laughs> She's also the founder of African Food Changemakers. She is the co-founder of East Foods and Sahel Consulting. And recently, she's just been appointed as the CEO of One Campaign, as announced on the 20th of February, 2024, by the Washington Organization. And she's going to typically be embodying everything we said about being a priest, and a king in the marketplace. Today, she's going to come be sharing from her priestly place. And in our conversation, we'll find out a bit more of her marketplace experience. Media, can you turn off the light as we take the video introduction of Mrs. Ndidi Wuneli? Ndidi Okonkwo Uwuneli is an expert on food ecosystems, entrepreneurship, social innovation, and philanthropy. She has over 25 years of international development experience and is the founder of Leap Africa and African Food Changemakers. She is also the co-founder of Sahel Consulting Agriculture and Nutrition Limited and AACE Foods Processing and Distribution Limited. Indidi serves on the boards of the Rockefeller Foundation, AGRA, Godrej Consumer Products Limited India, Stanvik IBTC Group, the Young Global Leaders of the World Economic Forum, and the Bridgespan Group. She holds an MBA from the Harvard Business School and an undergraduate degree with honors from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. She was a senior fellow at the Masava Romani Center for Business and Government at the Harvard Kennedy School, a visiting scholar at Max Bell School of Public Policy at McGill University, an Aspen Institute New Voices Fellow, and an Eisenhower Fellow. Ndidi is a TED speaker, was recognized as a Schwab Fellow, a young global leader by the World Economic Forum, and has received numerous awards and recognitions, including a national honor by the Nigerian government and the Harvard Business School Distinguished Alumni Award. She is the author of Social Innovation in Africa, a practical guide for scaling impact and food entrepreneurs in Africa, scaling resilient agriculture businesses, both published by Routledge. She also wrote a kingdom book title, Walking for God in the Marketplace. Now, this present house, let us rise and welcome on stage our own Mrs. Indidi Uwuneli. celebrate our own good morning church please have a seat <laughs> I want to start off by singing this song maybe angel will help me take the stage Lord and have your way I'm just a vessel Nothing more and when you're Just the best. 
choir we have here. It's a gift. And I, I was so blessed by your worship this morning. Thank you for ushering us into the presence of God. Thank you to the house. Thank you, Pastor Tony. Thank you, Sister Ankoyo. You know, when I saw Sister Ankoyo here, I said, oh my gosh, she's actually physically here. I was a bit nervous. Pastor Tony and Sister Koyo are my special mentors, spiritual parents. Um, they did our marriage counseling. For them to give us that time to do our marriage counseling, you know. And when she did that prayer for the family, I just said that was a sermon in itself. We could preach that sermon, we know. Thank you to the apostle and to this amazing couple who have been priests and kings in this land and have risen up to serve. Thank you so much. We don't take this for granted. And thank you to Pastor Jude and all the pastors in the house. The sacrifices that you bring every single Sunday. My daughter brings me to church every Sunday. She's a worker in the children's church. So I have to give a shout out to the children's church leadership, the teen church leadership. You have blessed people in the house. And I love Pastor Ifepu. She is a gift to this congregation. So a special shout out to her. You know, we can sit as people in the congregation. We don't know the price that the people pay every day for the members of this church. And I've been a beneficiary. I won't get emotional. But I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I had prepared a different sermon. But when you sent me the message, I had to change my sermon. Uh, because we've been looking at Revelations 5.10 and talking about what it means to be priests and kings and what to rule over what God has called us to do in this land. This land is groaning. How many of you have heard the groans of the land? We've talked about it for years, but I think this is probably the toughest time since probably the 90s. And I'm old enough to remember the 90s. The land is groaning, and it's groaning, and it's waiting for priests and kings to rise up and do what we've been called to do in the kingdom. So I just want to start off with a few verses um, about what we are called to do in the kingdom of God. So let's look at 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10, the message translation. I'll just start by reading it. But you are the ones chosen by God chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments, to do His work and speak out for Him, to tell the others of the night and day difference He made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Who has that story? So many of us have that story, but after today, hopefully more of us will have that story. So it's Palm Sunday, and as I reflected on the power of the sermon topic, I, I look back to see what it means to be a king and priest, using Palm Sunday as a way to remind ourselves of what Palm Sunday really is. As we drove in today, we saw a church outside with palms and the demonstration of Palm Sunday. But let's look back at Palm Sunday because we who have been in the church for a long time might forget the story. Matthew 21, 1 to 11. So Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. Okay? So I'll just read and hopefully project on the screen. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethadage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say to them, the Lord needs them, and he'll send them right away. This took place to fulfill what they had spoken to through the prophet. Say to the daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and a colt and the fall of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had said to them. They brought the donkey and the colts and placed the clo their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit. Now a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now we have heard this story. We've carried palms. We've put palms into, made palms into crosses. And sometimes we forget how that story ties to living as priests and kings. And when I was reflecting on this, God gave me an acronym, which is what I'm going to build my sermon on. And the acronym is VIEW, V-I-E-W. So ask your neighbor, what's in view? What's in view? What's in view? Don't forget that view. I like acronyms because we're tired. Some of us are hungry. Uh, we're thinking about what we're going to eat when we get home. So let's remember view, right? What's in view? What's in view? We use that term a lot, view. What do you see? What do you see? What's in view? So V stands for vision. Now, you can't be a king and priest if you don't have a vision. Now, many of us are jaded. <laughs> We're tired. We started January. We said, this is what I'm going to achieve this year. February has come. March is almost over. And we're like, huh? God, I'm supposed to be a priest and king. I'm supposed to be reigning. I'm supposed to be taking dominion. Tell your neighbor, don't be tired. It's only March. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Don't worry about what's happening around you. Don't be tired. See, Jesus had a very clear view when he was entering Jerusalem. He had a clear view because it had been foretold that he had to fulfill that promise in the Old Testament, that he had to come into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. I loved what Sister Nkoyo did up here. She prophesied and said, this baby will be Deborah, this baby will be an Esther. Prophecies have been made about you. Prophecies have been made about you. God has a plan for you. But the question is, what is your vision for your life? Many times we have a very small vision. When I talk to young people and they mentioned I was the founder of Leap Africa, so I've been talking to young people for a while. I'd ask young people, what's your dream? They'll say to have a nice car, a nice house, a nice wife and some children and a good job. I'll say, how much in the bank? They'll say five million naira. I'll say, that dream is too small. Why is it too small? Because it's focused on you. There is no dream that's focused on you that God can use. If you're a king and priest, your dream has to be focused on others. Tell your neighbor, is your dream focused on others? That vision has to be focused on others. I talked about Pastor Tony and Sister Nkoyo. Sister Nkoyo has a dream that's focused on others. I hope we all know the name. Bethesda. And I have a new vision for Bethesda even. As I was... My daughter and I were driving home from church the other day. The number of children who surrounded our car, we decided we'll try and feed some children that day. It was a stampede. And I thought, Bethesda has to open more schools for these street children. It's not enough to give them food. How can we be here? And the numbers of children have gone on from 20 who come around your car to the, just bring food and you'll see how many. There were marks on our car by the time we got home. And I thought, it's not enough to feed these children. They need to be clothed. They need to have a, a place to sleep. My vision for Bethesda is bigger than what we even have today. And there are going to be people who fund that vision. Sister Nkoyo, there are people who fund that vision. So the question is, what is your vision? And you can't have somebody else's vision. That's the other thing I've noticed. I work with young people and I work with entrepreneurs. And I meet a lot of entrepreneurs and I say, what is your vision? They say, well, I want to go into oil and gas. Why? Well, two of my friends are into oil and gas and they're hammering. That's why you want to go into oil and gas. Or ICT, I hear call centers are the big thing. Or women, fashion. Ah, I want to enter fashion. Why? Well, I like clothes. No. Remember what I told you, it's to solve a problem for who? Others. Ask yourself, are you follow, follow? Ask your neighbor, are you a follow, follow? Are you a copycat or are you the original? I want to be the original. Everyone here is an original. That's why they say our palms are what? Are different. Nobody has the same fingerprints. You have to be an original. God has to give you your own vision. And that vision has to be what? In the scripture, you have to be able to back it up with scripture. You have to have mentors in your lives and accountability partners who see that in you. You might not see it in yourself. And guess what? It might not look very popular. 
when God called us into agriculture, my husband and I, about 16 years ago, people said agriculture, two Harvard MBAs going into farming. In fact, a relative said to one of us, HBS MBA selling pepper, now wow. The same people have called me and said, ah, you're the Joseph of your generation. Seven years of plenty, seven years of farming. God has called you. So if you're listening to people, you'll be led astray. Don't plant your vision on what people think is popular. What God has called you to do might seem like laborer's work, might be below you in the mind of other people. Do you understand? You should be sitting in an office with AC. I remember the first day my husband came into the factory, he was still wearing his corporate wear, and he wanted a place to hang up his suits. By the time he had been there for two weeks, he was wearing traditional. Right? I lost my shoe once in mile 12. I got wet, my hair was wet, I lost the shoe I came with. How many of you have understand what it means? To walk in purpose, to work as a priest means you have to have what? A vision. And that vision is unique to you. Now people ask me all the time, how can I find my vision? The first step is to ask yourself, what gives you joy? What comes naturally to you that people have observed in you? Or what makes you angry? For all the things I've started, it wasn't joy, it was anger. Right? I was angry that young people were considered leaders of tomorrow. The people who told us we're leaders of tomorrow told us in their 20s, in their uh, 30s, in our 40s, 50s, and they're still there telling us you're leaders of tomorrow. And I wondered, what does tomorrow hold when the life expectancy is 57 in this country? If we wait till we're in our 50s, we'll be dead. So I decided to start an organization to teach young people they could be leaders of today and tomorrow. Do you understand? That was what LEAP was focused on. It was anger. I thought, they've told us a lie and we have to retrace our steps. And what got me into food and agriculture? Hunger. That we are naturally endowed for agricultural excellence. How many of you have things growing up in your backyard you didn't plant? Sometimes I'll see a purple tree. I'm like, who planted this purple tree? Things fall on the ground and grow in our country. And yet we're importing food. And yet food is unaffordable for the average person. 84% of Nigerians cannot afford a healthy diet. One out of three Nigerian children is stunted. Doesn't that make you angry? When well, we can feed ourselves and the world. And do you know why we're hungry? A lot of bad policies because some of you have refused to step into government when God has called you. Some of us are letting other people enter those positions when God has called us to be in those positions. So what is your vision? What is your vision for Nigeria? What's your vision for a successful business? What's your vision for a successful life? So that's V, vision. You have to have a vision. Number two, view, remember, is I. And I loved when my sister prayed this morning. I said she has already preached my sermon. I is for following instructions, <laughs> obedience. She talked about it. She talked about the donkey in her prayer, for those who are listening. Now, imagine that kings and priests have to be obedient to what God has said. So let's say God has given you the vision. Are you going to be obedient to that vision? He asked two people to go and get a donkey, right? They were obedient. They followed his instruction. Did his instruction make sense? Was there an address? Go and ask for a call from whose house? There was the house specified. Go to the village. And when you get there, you will find a family that has a colt and a donkey. Ask them for it. If you are the one being sent on that errand, what will you say? Please, I need a name. I don't want to look stupid. GPS location, phone number, something. And then you're asking me to ask them for something with nothing in return, no money. You're not giving me money. You're just saying, go and ask. How many of you will say, no, 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 that errand doesn't sound right? How many of you have got sent on an errand that you said it doesn't sound right? It doesn't sound right. You have not told me the full thing. I can't go. Some of us are afraid and too fearful. Or we need to see the full picture before we start going. 
That is the biggest problem holding priests and kings back in Nigeria and in the world. I, I talk to people of God, they say, Undidi, why do you start all these organizations? Because I don't have any, I'm not afraid. Because I have trust in who? I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. I don't have the full picture, but he who has sent me has gone ahead. You know, I'll give you a practical example. Some people say, God has called me to have children. I'm married. God has called me to have children. And then I say, okay, what are the ways that God can use for you to have children? You can give birth to them by carrying them in your tummy. One, you can adopt. Two, you can actually have spiritual children serving the congregation. Do you understand? You can have somebody else's a relative who's passed on and you can take their children and raise them. Is there one way to have children? But I talk to people in the church and they say, no, there's only one way. I'm like, are you kidding me? You are limiting God. And those who have decided, you know what, I can adopt or I can use any of the other four methods. The minute they do that, they have their own biological children. This has happened to four people I know. So why are you limiting God? Why is there the only one way? And we can go through the path. Oh, I won't start a business until I have at least 10 million in the bank. I won't leave my job until I have five investors who have stood by me. I will not, I will not. It's a friend, I've told her, please, 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 stop calling me. Because you, your answer to everything God lays in my heart that I should tell you is, oh, I have children to feed. I have school fees to pay. I said, you trust God, but you keep on saying that. You're holding on to a clutch. You're holding on to what? A clutch. And God cannot bless you and use you if you're holding tightly to what you know. Release it and let him show you what he has in store for you. Release it. Release it. It's a very, very important principle. Ask your neighbor, release it. Follow him. Obedience means you don't know where he's sending you. But if he's sending you and you know he's the one sending you, he will equip you. He'll provide for you and he'll sustain you. You know, with the businesses we've started, every time we wanted to give up, and we wanted to give up many times, and my sister, who is in the audience, can tell you, will tell, we'll say, God, this is your business. Is it your, not your business? Come and fight for us. Come and show yourself faithful. You sent us. Did we send ourselves? Come and honor yourself. So I is what? Instruction and obedience. Now, some of you, God is asking you to forgive. And I can't talk about obedience without talking about forgiveness. God is asking you to forgive. And every time I come on this podium, God tells me, you have to tell the people of God they have to forgive other people. Tell your neighbor, forgive other people. Forgive other people. You know, there was a story. When we first moved to Lagos, we lived in VGC. And we used to contribute money for our gate man's uh, salary. And unfortunately, one of our neighbors was collecting but not remitting to the gate man. So I stopped talking to them. I was angry. You're holding back money for the gate man. So one day I came to this church and God said to me, you have to go and ask them for forgiveness, for keeping malice. And they came to this church. And I went and said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for keeping malice. I'm sorry for being angry and not talking to you. And it was a release and God blessed me. Who do you need to ask for forgiveness today? Obedience. Don't say that you didn't hear from God. You've heard from God, Ndidi, has been sent by God to tell you there's somebody who you're angry at. They've done something to you. You're justified in some way, but it's not your issue. It's God's issue. Ask them for forgiveness. Because by keeping malice, not picking their calls, ignoring them, giving them the cold shoulder, what have you done? You've blocked your blessing and you've been disobedient. So I is what? Instructions. Follow the instructions. Now what is the next E? E is for excellence. Ah, God cannot choose you if you're not excellent. Kings and priests have to be excellent. What does it mean to be excellent? What does it mean to be excellent? To be excellent means you're bringing your A game every time. 
You're bringing your A-game. Tell your neighbor, are you bringing your A-game? We're not just talking about Sunday when you guys look so good, dress up, put on your makeup, wear your best outfits. We're talking about in your work, in the calling that he's given you, in what he's entrusted to you, are you excellence? You know the amazing thing? Your excellence is your cover. Your integrity is your cover. They put a cloak on the donkey. They put cloaks on the ground. That was the cover, right? They used it to cover themselves. They put it on the ground to worship the master. Now, what I have used in my life as a priest and king is integrity and excellence. So when they look for faults, they won't find any. When they try to bring you down, they can't have any, they have nothing to hold. Why? Because you've brought your best to everything. Now, who was excellent in the Bible? Who was described as excellent? Huh? Who was described? Daniel. What was excellent about Daniel? Let's look at Proverbs. Let's look at a couple of passages about excellence. For Daniel, Daniel 6.3. Can we put up Daniel 6.3? Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials because he had an excellent spirit. He had what? An excellent spirit. That distinguished him. Does your excellent spirit distinguish you? Are you on time? Are you consistent? Can people trust you? God cannot elevate you to be a priest and king if he can't trust you with small things. He can't trust you with small things how can he trust you with big things? Ask your neighbor, can he trust you with small things? Meaning, if he's giving you an instruction, are you doing it well? Are you doing it to the best of your ability? Are you exceeding his expectations? Let's look at the, uh, Philippians 4.8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is commendable, if anything is excellence, what does it say? If anything is praiseworthy, what comes out of your mouth? Is it excellence? This is one God has been working on me. Ah, Didi, what comes out of your mouth? Is it praiseworthy? Are you consistent with your heart, your head, and your mouth? Your thought life, is it excellence? What do you spend your time on? Is it on excellent things? Are you someone who's developing expertise in your area? So you're known as the world's best in that area. Are you excellent in your calling? Ask your neighbor, are you excellent? Are you excellent? Titus 2.7, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in all your teaching, show integrity. You know, integrity is a challenge in our country. It's a challenge, and I want to dwell on it for a second. Because when people are being interviewed for jobs and they tell us they are Christians, <laughs> what do you say? Ah, tell me something I don't know. I tell people, don't tell me you're a Christian. Show me. You know, St. Francis of Assisi says there's no use going anywhere to preach unless your walking is your preaching. Unless your life is your... Is it easy? <laughs> All of us have to repent on a daily basis to get better. Sometimes I actually come and apologize to my house help. I'm sorry for shouting. It takes a lot of humility, but I'm sorry. Why? Why should I apologize to somebody I employ? Because she's somebody of worth. She's God's child. And it's taught me that, gosh, if I'm honoring God, I have to be excellent in all things. But that leads me to the point... There are some of us who cannot find anybody to go and send to get donkeys and colts for us because nobody will go. Nobody will go for us. You know, for every vision you have, you need somebody who will go with you. Do you understand? A priest and king is nobody without followers. Do you have followers? Ask your neighbor, do you have followers? You know, people can't follow you unless they trust you. And how do you build trust with them? You treat them with respect and dignity. You treat them what? With respect and dignity. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter who you are. You're nobody if you can't treat others with respect and dignity. And as you rise, if people won't follow you, that's a sign. Do you understand? There are people who are rising. Nobody's following them. 
They are appointed to a position. They call their former staff. Their staff say, I'm not coming. Oh. Uh -uh. Have you heard that before? Why won't they come? Ah, you want me to come and be your Jackie again? As you rise, make other people rise with you. Make other people rise with you. I recently stepped down from my role as chair of Sahel Consulting, and I posted on Instagram about it because I felt it's important for people to know that you can build a company in Nigeria and other people can take it to the next level and you can trust them with your vision. Why? Because you have tested them and they have proven themselves worthy, but you have also proven yourself worthy because they will not build your company unless they believe that you're going to share the resources with them. You're going to give them credit. You're going to elevate them. You know, what gives me the greatest joy is to be on a plane somewhere and there are people, somebody says to me, hi, Ndidi. Oh, Leap Africa. Oh, you're on the same plane. Where are you going? Oh, Switzerland. Oh, Ace Foods. Where are you going? France. Ah, to God be the glory. There are staff going on. Some of them might even be in a better class than me. And I'm so proud. Do you know why? Because God has elevated them. Because they have bought into the vision, they've been obedient, they've been excellent. My brothers and sisters, who is following you? Ask your neighbor, who is following you? You can't be a priest and king if you're the only person who has to shine. You cannot be the only one shining. Elevate people, give them platforms to shine. And guess what? As they shine, God will continue to bless you. It doesn't take anything away from you to let other people shine. It doesn't. It doesn't. And finally, W, worship. Worship. What did they do? He got on the donkey. They put their cloaks on him, their integrity and excellence, and they worshiped. Hosanna in the highest. In this church, you have learned that your worship is what? Your weapon. Your worship is your weapon. Because as you rise as, as a priest and king, guess what? The arrows will come. Will it be easy? No. Lots of arrows. Lots of arrows to take you down. If they try you and they can't get you, they'll try your children. If they try your children, they can't get your children to try your husband. If they can't get your husband, they'll try every which way. Arrows. So your worship is your weapon. And for kings and priests, we can't work this journey alone. We need to worship with others. God has blessed me with serious prayer partners, serious accountability partners, sisters who hold me up. You need that. You need brothers who hold me up, who hold you up. My, my, my daughter laughs that, mommy, you have a prayer meeting on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm praying for people. They're praying for me. Yesterday, a friend called me. She said, Ndidi, arrows, arrows. We need to pray for you. Who are the other people we can call? Two other people. We prayed. She said, it's been lifted. How many of you have people like that who are walking this journey as kings and priests with you, who have discernment for what God needs to do in your life and who you know are covering you. Ask your neighbor, do you have accountability partners? Do you have prayer partners? There's nothing that takes it away from you. Some people are shaking their heads. Some people are smiling. If you don't have, please appoint them today. Appoint them today. Say, I need you. Because where I'm going, I need fortification. I need encouragement. I need worshipers. I need prayer warriors to hold me up. Where God is taking you, you need to be held up. You know, you need to be held up. Those who have gone into government like Oke and Alama and Omobala Johnson had a team of intercessors. They came in, they came out with their integrity intact. They had what? A team of intercessors. There's nowhere God is sending you that you don't need that intercessor. So your worship is your weapon. You're surrounding yourself with worshipers, you're holding up to the worshipers, and you're going to stand your ground. Now, you really have to continue to invest in yourself. Listen, children of God, where God is calling us as priests and kings, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. And where it is tough, like it is tough in Nigeria today, that's when the kings and priests have to rise. And guess what? There's room for you. Because when the pressure is on, they're looking for people who have solutions. What is your solution? What is your solution? What solution do you have? What solution do you have? What solution do you have? 
As I round up, I just want to ask a few questions and then we'll pray. So I, my questions are, what is your view? What do you see? What is your vision as a king and priest? What is your vision? What has God laid in your heart? What problem has he called you to solve for his people? What are you uniquely endowed by God to achieve? The second question, what instruction have you received? Are you obeying that instruction? Who is walking on this journey with you? How loyal are they? Number three, excellence. How are you living and leading with excellence? What are they saying about you? What are they saying about your kingship and your priesthood? When you're not in the room, what are they saying about you? Are you listening to what they say about you? You know, when I have feedback sessions with my team, in addition to giving them feedback, I ask them for feedback. Many times, especially with people from this part of Nigeria, you're about people, ha, ah, it's tough to get people to tell me the truth. They always give me high ratings, high ratings, high ratings. By the time I beg them, please, Edjo, it will help me. By the time they start telling you, Ndidi, you're too direct, you're this, you're, by the time they're done, I'm like, thank you. Can we give upward feedback? Can we receive the feedback as a gift? When you go home today, ask your children how you can be a better father, because you're a king in your home. Women, mothers, ask your children how you can be a better mother, right? Ask your team members and your staff how you can be a better boss or how you can be a better colleague. It's humbling. It's humbling. When I first did this at Faith Foundation, I had to do an anonymous thing. This was 23 years ago. They were anonymous feedback. I had to leave the room to cry. After I cried, I wiped my tears and came back. But guess what? I was 25 years old and I've gotten better every year with being a boss, because I have received the feedback. Has it been easy to receive? Uh, are there impurities that God has had to take out? Obviously. And that's why we're work in progress. Has anybody arrived in excellence? Has anybody arrived? Is anybody like Jesus? We want to look like Jesus. We want to make God proud, but it's a journey. And the first thing is to be honest that you're on that journey. And finally, how is your worship life? And who are you worshiping? And this is important. I want to just dwell on this as I round up. Who are you worshiping? We have a tendency in Nigeria to worship human beings. Eh? To worship people because of who they are, how they dress, who they, what they wear, what cars they have. People are always laughing at me. You drove yourself to church, obviously. You went to the market. I'm in food and agriculture. That's my research. You don't want me to go? to understand what is happening. Where do you get to where you think that there's a level? Or get a text message, Ndidi, why are you flying economy class? Is there anything wrong? Tell your neighbor, kings and priests stay in their lane. You're not living anybody else's life. And I want to say that because the pressure to be somebody you're not is serious. Is it serious? And that's why people owe school fees so they can travel business class misplaced priorities. Tell your neighbor, do not have misplaced priorities. Because I know how many school fees I can pay with that business class ticket, I will fly economy. Honestly, how many better is that school fees I can pay? Eh? My brothers and sisters, don't worry about anybody else's journey. Your journey as a priest and king is yours alone. And the only person you have to answer to is God. So stay in your lane. Resist the pressure. Worship only God. If God is proud of you, that's all that matters. If God elevates you, that's all that matters. So as we round up, I think God is looking for men and women who he can position as kings and priests. He is. There is a lack of leadership everywhere. There's a lack of leadership and the world is groaning. But you have to be ready. He can't use you unless you're ready. You have to be excellent. You have to have integrity. You have to be humble and grounded. I looked up and I said, why did Jesus choose a donkey? What was the symbolism of a donkey? He could have risen a horse. And I saw online, donkey symbolizes humility. So as God raises you up to be his king and his priest, stay humble. 
Stay grounded because he can use anybody else. The day you start thinking it's about you, he'll say, Didi, I don't need you anymore. Let me find somebody else who is humble. I don't need you. I can use anybody. I will only use a humble and contrite spirit, somebody who is grounded. So my brothers and sisters, stay humble, stay grounded, stay visionary, and let God use you. What do you see? What is your view? Let's say view together. Vision, Vision. instruction, Vision. excellence, and worship. May God bless you all. I think we can clap better. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Um, we're saying that today is an extraordinary service and unlike your usual sermons where you just hear a word, you may please be seated. You may please be seated. We are thinking of doing a five, ten minutes Q&A. Is that a good idea? Yes. Is that a good idea? Yes. Ma'am, would you want to sit or you're fine standing? She says she's fine standing, so never mind about the bars too. So I'm going to take my very few questions from... No, that's fine. We're going to take my very few questions from the analogy and the scripture you read. By the way, view. I kept writing and writing, and I said, no, I'll stop. I would... let's, let's appreciate what God has done again one more time. So, ma'am, for want of time, first question to you. And this time, we're going to speak to your marketplace experience because we have a lot of young people who are asking very, very direct questions. And if we do a pool here, you may be shocked that 50% of us here are below 30. You'd be amazed. So the first question is, Jesus went for a young cult, never been ridden by anyone. If the cult were to be human, it will have imposter syndrome. There are more qualified beasts of burden in Israel why are you coming for the unqualified, never been reading cult? How do you deal with the imposter syndrome? How do you deal with, we see these accolades, we see these institutions, Rockefeller, all of that. Some of them male dominated, people of color. You, you sit amongst these people and you instruct as a child, what makes you feel qualified? to be ridden by God, by Christ, into these marketplace um, sectors. Thank you so much. So I'll say a couple of things. The first one is Godfidence. Godfidence. My, my, friend, my friend Gloria Brimer ta taught me about Godfidence. And Godfidence is that you have confidence in God. And God who has sent you will go ahead of you. So. That is the first thing. You have to know what your source of confidence is. Godfidence. Godfidence. The second thing is you have to build your muscle. Now, it's interesting. I first got the opportunity to run Faith Foundation when I was only 25. And I remember actually... Sorry, ma'am. They, yes, they, they brought the chair. <laughs> okay. Are you okay? Um, yes, you yes. Okay. And when Fola Adiola called me, I was actually in the United States. I had just finished my MBA. I was working at McKinsey, and he said, I have some offers for you. And one was to come back and help him start Faith Foundation. And Sorry, ma'am. Do you care to just mention how old you were then? At 25. 25. She was 25. <laughs> Somebody said 25. Okay. So it, just, just say. But God had laid that burden for me in my heart. And I thought maybe when I'm 35, I'll start an organization like that. And this was 10 years earlier. But I would say there are a couple of things. One, it's important to be in a Bible-believing church. You know, somebody had called ahead to tell Somebody pastor, missed that. It's important to be in a Bible-believing <laughs> church. Should we switch microphones? Ma let me help you with this one so they can hear you. Do you mind? <laughs> can you hear her? Hey, okay, can they hear? can hear you. So somebody had actually called ahead, and that's why I said this community of support, called ahead and told Pastor Tony that I was going to a, a redeemed church in Chicago, but there's this young lady coming to start this organization. Pastor Tony drove to Foladiola's house to meet with me. Can I tell you, that is humility, 
I'm 25. This is Pastor Tony. You know, you, some of you might not know where Pastor Tony has come from or how many churches and disciples he's Bill. molded and raised. But I came to a Papa Parish probably when I was a student in university. I came to Nigeria and I remember visiting this church. I didn't even know who the pastor, but it was humongous to get in and get out. Do you understand? So that was Pastor Tony to drive himself to Faladiola's house to look for me. And he held me by the hand, both him and Sister Nkoyo supported me, prayed for me. And I tell you to have that support and spiritual nurturing is unmatched. Please give them a round of applause on my behalf. Nobody, I didn't know Sister Nkoyo was gonna be here. So it's not, a, it wasn't planned. This was not planned. The third, so that's number two. The third thing is you build your muscle in terms of your knowledge and expertise. You know who you are. So I, I always tell Nigerians, nobody can be an expert on Nigeria but you. You know, I've gone to international conferences. There are people who have visited Nigeria for two weeks and they speak with so much confidence about our country. And it upsets me because I don't even have airtime. Do you understand? They're on the podium. I'm the, I'm, after that, I said, I'm going to write some books about agriculture, about social innovation, so that I'm now viewed as an expert in this space. So when I go to those forums, people are not looking at them as experts. They're looking to me. So what is your area of expertise? And all of you have that, right? You know something nobody else knows. You have a lived experience nobody else does. Deepen that area of expertise. Write if you are blessed to write. Sing if you're blessed to sing. There are gifts in this choir. We have to release these people to the world. The world has to hear their voices. I was asking the pastor, what's her name? Angel. I said, Angel. Stella. A gift to the world. And you have so many gifts. I mean, we know the gifts that have been nurtured in this church. But building your muscle gives you confidence. And you've talked about some boards. Some of the boards I'm on, they are former world presidents who have received Nobel Prizes. So sometimes I do get intimidated, but I have to remember that I do have a voice. I do have something to share that's unique to me. I have my lived experience and I have God on my side and I have people praying for me everywhere I go. And that enables me to overcome my imposter syndrome. Let's clap to that. So the next time the devil comes whispering into your ears that you're not qualified for where you sit, you tell him, number one, I have God on my side. Number two, I have a community of people who have nurtured me, DTI, Pastor Tony, and all the leaders they have poured into my life. And number three, I know my stuff. Nobody can tell my story in my field better than I do. Let's appreciate those three key points that she has raised. And I'm just taking my analogy and my questions from the donkey today. I just, let's just stay on Matthew 21. The second thing we find about the donkey was that when the donkey was demanded for, right, there was questions as to, this, this likely ties to question one, but just very quickly. There was questions as to why are you releasing this donkey? And Jesus said to them, say to the person, the master needs it. How do we as Christian entrepreneurs, believers in the marketplace, understand clearly our, with a sense of mission that we are not here for ourselves, but we are here to fulfill the master's need? How do we stay? How do you stay daily in that consciousness? So I think there are a couple of things. The first one is this concept of vision. You know, I think everybody has a burden they carry for something. But not everybody has figured out what that burden is. Mm -hmm. And I always ask people to go home and ask other people, if you can't see that burden, ask other people what they see that you care about. What breaks your heart? You know, I, there are lots of things that break my heart, but there are some things that break my heart more very, very much deeply. Do you understand? So your own thing might be, I am upset that children are hungry. Banky, thank you, right? Thank you for all that you do. He, that's his burden, right? There's, he wants to feed children, right, who are hungry. What is your own burden? Now, 
I have a burden, and I, God has given me many burdens. You can't release all the burdens at the same time. So you have to face them and focus on the ones He's given you at any given time. For me, and I'll give you very practically, leading up to this new job I've taken on, God gave me a, a vision about five years ago. He said, Ndidi, I'm going to use you to build bridges between Africa and the rest of the world. Oh, wow. That's a very big oh, wow. vision. Oh, wow. And I was like, how is this going to happen? And I was getting very impatient, right? And impatience will kill us. Because if you're impatient, you make mistakes. If you're impatient, you run into other people's destinies, not your own. You miss what God has for you if you're impatient. And I was impatient, right? And it's about being clear that you have authority to wait on God and that He will equip you as you're waiting. In fact, the sermon I was going to preach was while you're waiting, what you should you do? Mm. While you're waiting for the fulfillment. There will be another chance to preach it. <laughs> it will be part while two. While you're waiting. Because, and I'm deviating, but the point is, you have the authority to take territory for the kingdom. These guys had authority to go and request for this thing, and it was granted to them because the master had need for it. If he has sent you with a vision, he needs you to fulfill that vision. He'll equip you with everything you need to fulfill that vision. Is it going to be easy? No. Do you want to give up many times? Yes. Are you frustrated? Yes. But God will equip you with everything you need to fulfill that vision. Let's, let's appreciate. I just have two more questions. And we are pressed for time. It could have been more. Right? But what she has said is that daily living in the consciousness of your mission, sometimes the whole, the broad spectrum of the mission can be overwhelming. So you phase it. Somebody must take note of that. Sometimes you phase it. You phase it. Joseph had a dream. It had to come to pass with his increased capacity and it came to pass in phases, right? Um, you, you also mentioned that as you keep the vision before you daily, it motivates you to keep... I, I wanted to follow, follow up something very quickly. Many times... It's, it's, it's a part B of that question, so don't take it as one of my main questions. Many times in a country like ours, it's, it's very easy for you to, to be thinking about self. self. Self because there's a lot of pain around. The human nature wants to go into self-preservation mode, right? Where is, I mean, I was teaching a couple of young people and they said, not be best way chop, they think about vision. Do you understand what I mean? In street parlance for our international friends, that's a pigeon way of saying you have to have satisfied the Maslow's, you know, hierarchy of basic needs before you can reach out. But must it be so though? I disagree. And you know that I've told this story before at TPH, that when we were starting Ace Foods, our salary was 50,000 Naira each. We actually have made six figures before. We're starting a food company. It's brand new. We can't pay ourselves much. So we wrote 50,000 Naira, sweat equity, 450,000. So maybe our salary should be 500,000. And this was in 2000 and 2019, no, 2009. 2009. Yes. And everybody was like- so Remember Harvard graduates, yeah? Okay. <laughs> How I've been making six figures in dollars before that at McKinsey, so now I'm making 50,000 Naira. How are we going to pay school fees? How are we going to feed our children? We had two children. And God laid in my heart one day, you know, I had a dream. Somebody can give us a house. Like somebody who called me and said, Didi, I have a house for you. It didn't exactly happen that way. But I saw a guy, a friend, and I said, we're looking for a house, and we don't want to rent, we want to own. And he said, I have a friend who has a house. And I knew, we knew the friend. And the guy said, you can move into this house and pay over 18 months in Lucky Phase 1. This house had ACs, it had a generator, it had furniture. True story. Am I lying? I'm not lying. God can supply all your needs if you do his work. Take your eyes off your lack and put your eyes on his purpose. You know what shocks me, and I'll give you an example. I have somebody who works with me right now in my household, and I keep on thinking, if he just did his work, he doesn't have to ask for a salary increase. I'll be the one giving him. Because he's doing his work. He's doing it with everything in it. I, I will be the one giving him gifts. That's how God is. Do my work, I'll take care of you. 
do my work, I will supply your needs. But why will you, how can he trust us if we don't want to take our eyes off our lack? We're very focused, and I know there's hunger in the land, but we're so focused on preserving the little we have, we don't know what he can give us. Do you understand? We don't know what we, he can give us. And, and I want to give a shout out to my husband, I think he's here, and my children. Because Mr. when you Wunnelli, decide... Please, do you want to wave at us? No, he won't wave, but please... <laughs> I want to make a point. Ushers, why as, did you not no, bring no, no. him to why, work? Why I'm giving a shout out <laughs> is because as, as priests and kings, when God calls you, your family has to be and is the most important vital support network you need. And I've been blessed with an amazing support network. My husband, Let's my appreciate children, Mr. Wune, and please. my siblings and my community. Because, and this is for women, especially in Nigeria, we're Nigerian women. We struggle with trying to fulfill our purpose. You know, it's International Women's Month. We struggle with trying to fulfill our purpose and staying married. Because oftentimes, the society cannot take that. Do you understand? The limited concept that a couple can rise together, right? And fulfill God's purpose and plan that God has entrusted them with. So I just want to say I honor my husband for being a great support sister. We honor, we honor the husband and, and all, all the, the men who and all the are men in the house yes. who support their wives as they Amen. fulfill God's vision on their lives. Because your wives also help you fulfill God's vision on your life. And that's why you both need to work and rise together. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm so proud to be in a house where that construct doesn't hold water. Because here, Pastor Tony has taught us to enable every gender to fly and and you are a perfect example of an enabled an enabled priest and king let's put our hands together for for that one more time so back to my last two questions the first one is on pivoting pivoting when did you recognize it was time to step out of leap africa to step out of um, the, the, the board of Sahel. When, you know, the Bible says that Jesus mounted the court. And two things. The court was never been, has never been ridden. And courts are usually trained first before they know how to navigate. But this court yielded to Christ. And everywhere Christ led, we didn't hear that the court was a problem, right? How do you know identify seasons of pivot and how, you just told us one where you had to take a pay call from a six figure to to 50,000 in 2009 you know just the difference in lifestyle how do you know how to pivot and what helps you during those moments when you are pivoting so I'll say two things one remember I talked about burdens and vision so you have to be sensitive to the Spirit of God when he's lifting one vision from you and giving you another vision. And you have to know when to move into the next vision. Obedience is critical. Timing is everything. When he says, and for me it's peace, when I don't have peace about a new issue, I know that it's time to move into that. And then he sends mentors and counselors and his word to confirm it. But he places a new zeal, a new fire, and he takes away that fire. The old one, the one for youth. I'm no longer a youth. <laughs> Can I be running an organization for youth? Absolutely not. Let the young people lead. Do you understand? Or I remember my successor at Leap, Mosulayo Day, when she was training. One day I was sitting in the room listening to her train, and I said, this lady is now a better trainer than me. And when I saw the evaluations from her training, her scores were outstanding. I said, my work is done. When your work is done and God has raised the next generation, somebody say hallelujah. And let him, let the next generation take it to the Absolutely. next level. And sometimes it's gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. So I've become a serial entrepreneur. But each time God says they are ready, step out in faith for the new thing. And you have to be willing to step out for him to give you the new thing. If you're still holding on, he can't give you the new thing. Let, let, let's clap to that. Salah. A word is enough for the wise. You are going to do something after this last question. I'm going to ask everybody under 35 to stand on their feet. And we're going to, we're going to have you say with a prayer over them, right? But this last question. We know that Jesus was walking into Jerusalem. And they put their clothes 
on the floor. It was actually the donkey that was stepping on those clothes and the palm branches. And the Hosanna was being given, Hosanna in the highest. How should the donkey stay conscious that Hosanna is not for me, it's for the man I'm carrying? How do you stay humble? How do you stay nimble? How do you stay, how do you stay under God in the midst of all of this global? You know, there was a time I told, we were speaking about your, the frequency of your travel. How do you deal with all of this and still, you still pray? You still keep your personal work with God and you're still under authority. I still hear you say, Pastor Tony is my mentor. How do you put tie all of this together? So this is especially for the under 35s. I think I had a rude awakening when I was very young and it was a gift. And I've told this story somewhere before. <laughs> that I had an internship at McKinsey, New York. I was 19, 20 years old, 19 or 20. And I went to the Hamptons. I went horseback riding, sailing, life of the rich and famous. I'm from Enugu, I grew up in Enugu. I'm from Anambra State, I'm from Oka, but I grew up in Enugu. So Enugu girl in the Hamptons. And I had to come back to New York City early. And I took the Hampton bus. It's a luxury bus. Got to New York City and I left my wallet on the bus. And I had to beg for money to get it onto a train or into a taxi to go for my meeting. I was doing this program called SEO, it's an internship. And the first person I asked, they said, we don't want to give you money, you can use it for drugs. And the second person gave me a token which I used to get on the train to go for my meeting. And I was really a Christian. When I got to that meeting, I just felt like crying. And I said, God, why did you allow me to go through this experience? He said, I want to tell you there's no difference between you and a beggar. It's my grace. Without plastic, without money in your pocket, what, who are you? And that was a wake-up call. This has happened to me once. Not once. It had to happen again. I went to my university, it was 125 years since women attended Penn. I was on a panel with Mrs. Lauder of Estee Lauder. The guy who was Bill Clinton's photographer did a photo shoot for me. I was feeling like I've arrived. I got to the airports. In fact, they humbled me at the airports. By the time I was done, I was crying again. And God said, you see, Ndidi, it's not about you. I can use anybody. The day you start, so those two experiences as a young person, man, I don't want to cry. I don't want to eat grass. I don't want to be humble, taken to the highest heights like King Nebuchadnezzar and brought down to the lowest lows. I need to stay low. And every day I stay low and remember who my source is. God will continue to use me. Never for a day think it's about you. He can use anybody. Anybody who's humble, obedient, ready to listen, who is a willing vessel. And who forgives? Who forgives? Because as you rise, you face many, many reasons not to forgive. But you have to learn to forgive. Believe me, those lessons were good. But please, none of you have to have those experiences. Learn from my experiences that it is clear and it is biblical. If you elevate yourself, you will be debased. So let the only one who can elevate you, elevate you. But give him the glory. You know, it's so scary. Yes, please clap. It's so scary when I read the scripture that God resists the proud. Somebody said that this session will not end until I give the congregation at least one slot to ask a question. And there's been a, a unanimous nomination of the person that will ask the question. I would like to ask the, um, the, the team to take a microphone to Pastor Babo Egregor. She... <laughs> no, no. Thank you very much, my dear. I, you said when you were speaking that one of the biggest problems we have in Nigeria is integrity. Would you share with us any integrity test or issues you have confronted in your career? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. It's getting real today. <laughs> <laughs> we confront integrity tests every, every day. day. <laughs> every day. If you share one profound <laughs> one with us, ma'am. I think the biggest one we constantly face is taxes. I shouldn't be saying this. My husband is listening. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge problem for us because we pay taxes in Nigeria. We pay taxes in America. And we have to report all our businesses in America too. So that is an integrity test. 
It's a huge test because Nigeria doesn't recognize the taxes we pay in America. So we're double tax, being taxed twice. So every tax season, we have battles in our house around integrity because you, want, you don't want to ever say, I have two books in my businesses. I have, do you understand? The one that I show to the public, but is it easy? No. Another one is Ace Foods. When we started our food company, we had an integrity test. Our, cost, our competitors, we sell 25 kg bags of spices, chili pepper, ginger, turmeric, and we found our competition was selling maize, dyeing it red, and putting Sudan red, which is an extract, which makes it red. And that extract, Sudan red, is carcinogenic. But their margin would be 40%, 50%. Our margin is 10%, our profit margin. So our competitors said, match this. So imagine you have somebody telling you to match it, 40% margin. But you know that you use the spices. If it's going to kill anybody, it will kill you. Right? I always tell people, if, you're, if you're, you have a school and your children don't go to that school, should anybody else's child go there? You have a hospital that you don't use, you go abroad for your own care, should anybody go to your hospital? No. Nobody should eat our spices if we cannot eat them. And that's the only thing you find in my house. So at that time, we had to decide we're going to be people of integrity. Right? We're not going to put that extract. We're going to, what we put on our label is what you're going to see. And we're going to put the needs of Nigerians first, not our own needs. And that was a tough, tough decision. So those are two examples that are very, very honest and real. Please don't publish. I hope that the U.S. government will not audit us after, <laughs> after I talk about taxes. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very safe, Matt. Thank you so much for spending today with us. We are hoping soon to have another opportunity of interaction with you. Um, by the way, next, on Wednesday, in our season finale of Working in Dominion on our Richard series, we'll be having a one-on-one -on -one like this with Mr. Leke Alda. And you want to be part of that experience, 7 p.m. at the Dome, just by my way of just saying this. Ma'am, you would like, to, would you like to pray for our under 35s? If you, now today is, um, the day we'll bring out our birth certificate in church. Now, so if you are under 35, like me, sorry, no, not like me. <laughs> Please stand on your feet. Please stand on your feet. Let's clap for them as they stand. Did you see what I was saying, ma'am? Did you see what I was saying, ma'am? Yes, yes. That the future is here. The future is here. The future is here. All right, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we're so thankful for this time in your presence. Thank you, Father, because you're a good God. You're a great King above all kings. Father, we bow before your throne of grace, and we say, blessed be your holy name. Father, thank you for these young people in the audience. Thank you for the visions they carry. Thank you because you have anointed them for such a time like this. It's not a mistake that they're in Nigeria. It's not a mistake that they're here today. And Father, we just thank you for their lives. We thank you for the gifts you've bestowed upon them. We thank you for the love you have for them. You love each of them. You know them by name. Father, you know them by name. You love them. And Father, you've called them for such a time like this. And so Father, we ask you to fill them first with peace and joy, that they may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Give them a hunger and thirst after you. Let them want to know you more and more. Father, fill them with visions for what you will use them to accomplish in this nation. Fill them with courage and strength. Remove all fear, all doubt, all anxiety, all hopelessness. We come against hopelessness. We come against a procrastination spirit. We come against any, any hindrance to excellence. We come against anything that will prevent them from fulfilling their destiny. We ask for an obedient spirit. We know sometimes that this generation questions a lot. Father, but I, we know that when they ask and question, you will answer. We ask that you prove to them that you are a living God. You prove to them that you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you and that they will seek you and when they seek you, they will find you. Surround them with helpers, surround them with angels, surround them with good friends, accountability partners, people who walk with them as they live holy and righteous lives that are acceptable to you. Father, we set them apart for your work on this 
earth. We set them apart. We say these ones will be anointed by you and none shall touch them. No evil hand will be upon them. We raise them up as disciples who will worship you. Father, they will rest in the knowledge and love of God. Thank you for these ones. We will come here to testify of what you've done through them for our, lo our world. They will be king and priests and they will stand for holiness and righteousness. Their children and grandchildren will rise and call them blessed. Their parents will bless them. Father, we will testify of these ones. Blessed be your holy name. To you be all the honor and glory, for we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. For the rest of us, we'll just stretch forth our hands to us, Mrs. Muneli, and we'll begin to speak the blessings of God over her. We'll say, on this new journey you are taking on in Washington, you would be a beacon of light. We, the Ecclesia, we begin to speak God's word over your life that God goes ahead of you. The palms the, the, and the clothes will be brought ahead. And indeed, you walk in the consciousness that Hosanna belongs to the Lord all the time. The Lord will be around you like a shield. His fire will surround you. You'll continually be a mouthpiece. As he has sent you, you'll be a bridge between Africa and the rest of the world. In Jesus' matchless name, amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Let's appreciate her. She takes a seat. Amen. Thank you for your patience. We are closing this service in a few minutes. I am just going to take the closing formalities. We're done. And Pastor Nee, you can just be my wingman on this. The first thing, please, you may be seated. You may be seated. The first thing I like to do is to recognize those who are worshiping with us for the first time. Just wave at me. Wave at me. It's your first time in service today. Oh, wow. This number of hands. I want to specially recognize the couple to my left in blue. Do you mind standing up? Because they were one of the first persons that came into the auditorium this morning. And it happens to be their first time in church. I hope you had a good service. God bless you. For the rest, others... For the others, just take up your Bibles, your bags, all you came to church with. Join the gentleman, the gentleman with the signage, you are welcome. We have a lounge just opposite the auditorium. We'd like to tell you more about ourselves. We'd like to pray for you. We want to know if you are visiting or you, are, you just moved into town. And we'll tell you more about how you can make your family church or how we can make your visit a very good one. Clap for them as they go, please. Yeah. Yes, in, in service today, before we share the benediction, uh, I have my brother and friend, I call him Bishop Banks. Yeah, uh, Pastor Banky W. Come, 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 come. Banky Wellington is, yes, let's appreciate him as he comes. So I'll just tell you why he's here, a few minutes. By the way, congratulations again for your new season and how God has helped you. Yeah, Pastor the man of God is, is walking in the path of government, governance and government. And we see how God is causing him to evolve in it. We thank God for his courage and we thank God for what he represents. A couple of days we're talking about the plans for this season and he, he spoke about a, a, a food drive he was, he was planning. And then we at this present house was planning an Easter food bank to give out to the community, the Tedo community and the community around us food, clothes and medical supplies this Easter. Because Jesus died, experienced resurrection so that humanity will come into the life of God. And there's no better way to show our neighbors that we love them, we feel the pain around us. So when I heard about his, we said we have one house, we will just collaborate. Do you like the sound of the word collaboration? So, on Saturday, we are throwing the car park of the freedoms of, of, the, of this facility and, and the dome open and we are, there are medical supplies to be given out, there are clothes to be given out, there is food to be given out to families to make sure that on Easter Sunday, someone has a meal on their table. So first we are asking you, spread the word, tell people there is food at this present house on the, 20, on the 30th yes. of March. Yes. But I'd just like Panky to say a few things about the food. Right well, you've said it all. Good morning, church. 
Come on, good morning, church. Um, happy to be back home. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a son of this house first. We loaned you first. I'm a son of Pastor well. Tony and Mrs. R first. And it's, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, like Pastor Jude said, we're collaborating on Saturday, March 30th. That's next Saturday. Um, we're going to be doing a food bank, a clothing drive, and a medical outreach. We'll be using the dome. We'll be using the parking lot. For the food bank, we have boxes of food supplies that can help a family for a few weeks. Um, we've also been gathering clothing contributions from friends, from families, from our networks. Um, the Bible says, if your brother does not have a coat or doesn't have his daily food, and you say, go in peace, be well, be warm, keep warm, and you do nothing about his daily needs, then you can't say that the love of God is in you. Amen? Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave, right? So we're going to do some giving this weekend. So we want to encourage everybody, if you have clothes that are still in good condition pastor jude i'm taxing you for this kaftan um but don't bring rags don't bring things that are worn out bring things that you are proud to wear that you want to give to somebody else all week long i think they can bring it to the church yes you bring it to the church office there's the administrators are ready please if they are clothes wash them send them to the laundry please pack them yes and then bring them in the administrators are receiving we're receiving food items we're receiving clothes for the food prefer? sorry sir yeah, for sir. the food items we are going to do food boxes that we order because it's easier than trying to divide things on the day and making sure you don't want to cause a problem with the community where they say somebody got this me i didn't get that so we're ordering food items so if you want to contribute to the food bank each box costs about six five seven k and like i said it'll serve a family for a few weeks so just make a donation to the church and just indicate that it's for the easter outreach and the church will make sure that we place the order our target is a minimum of 1,000 people. We want to impact 1,000 lives. That's not to say we cannot do 5,000 or 10,000, but a minimum we should be able to bless 1,000 people. We already have uh, MedPlus. Um, they've decided to come and donate. Um, we have Garment Care. They're helping us clean some of the clothes. We have small businesses giving us uh, money towards the food bank. So please be a part of this. Sow something into this. And we know that when you give to the poor, you're lending to God. So give God a loan this Easter weekend. Media, Thank you so me. much. God bless you. Hold on, as a Banky, you don't go yet. Media, help me with the welfare account, if you can find it, or the phone numbers that people can contact if they want to make donations to this food drive. Just put it up there while we, while we, do, while we just round this up very quickly. Now, note that we also need volunteers. Yes. We need volunteers, especially the people that stood up when Pastor Ndidi was praying. We need young, we need strong, we yeah. need energetic people. We'll give you t-shirts on the day. You just help us to serve. We're going to, don't worry about security. We're fine. We've yeah. sorted all of that out. We'll make sure everybody that comes into the facility are going to behave orderly. And we're going to start at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And we'll be done before 3, 4 p.m. Just giving out to the society. How many of you think it's a good way to, do, to spend the Easter, right? Put your hands together. I know that media, I didn't prepare them for this. But before we leave, you will get, you know, if you want to also be contacted, leave your, leave your details at the information desk. Someone will be contacting you the course of the week. And you would look out, look out for our social media pages. Yes. You will know other channels by which you can give to this. Let's appreciate Bishop Banks. My brother and friend. Pastor Nee. Banky W, by the way, the captain, you have it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man of God, what do we do with this service? We have to close. We need to release the kings. Yes, we need to release the kings. We need to release the kings. Okay, so lead us to release the kings. All right, can we please rise on our feet? Rise majestically. You didn't tell them about Sunday service though. Uh, 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 how many of us don't know about the Sunday service? It's I, I guess, day. <laughs> I guess that's, the, that's the way to ask about it. It's Easter day and we are having a one service and it's going to be with the apostle over this commission, Apostle Tony Rappo. Are you excited? Yes, I believe you are excited. Yes. Now, now, tell a friend to tell a friend. Please make it a date with us. The children are going to be on 
um, holiday so you may have visitors please bring them to church and come early you know the way we always do it 8 a.m we start the prayers join us for the prayers and by 9 a.m dot we go live to the general public and um, if you come late the galleries are always there for you if you come late hallelujah hallelujah can you please hold someone hold someone because now you're going to exercise your office as a priest and the lord said to moses he said this is the order by which you will bless the house of israel he says may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift the light of his countenance towards you and turn his face full towards you it gives you peace now and forevermore go and reign god bless you see you on wednesday